many men and as many times for as long as possible. We call him Doc. Welcome to Combat Vet. That's the host, Aaron Chief Siebert. Hey, how's it going? Hey, this is uh, Aaron Siebert, retired Navy Chief. Lucky to be alive after being hit with a mortar round. I'm coming to you live from Warrior Built Studios today. And I'm um, at the Warrior Built facility. Um, this is brought to you by sitchradio.com. Ryan Colburn, obviously being my producer and uh, you know wizard at all this stuff. And uh, this is where I talk about a lot, of, a lot of different things that affect combat vets. This is uh, for... Um, educating the public and helping somebody out sitting on a couch, uh, maybe wondering, you know, how to how to better handle themselves. And today, I'm just going to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind, and you know, it's also been difficult for me. And it, you know, it basically, just goes into call your parents. And uh, you know, I know it refers to parents, but uh, you know, some of us didn't have parents. Some of us maybe don't have uh, that 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 parent. But uh, there's somebody in your life that helped guide you through some things. Uh, and maybe you haven't made that call. Maybe you have, uh, but maybe you haven't had the conversations or maybe you have, um, <clears throat> but let me get into it. You know, we get back from combat um, and we try to figure things out. Uh, we just, we just measured things in our lives that really mattered. And we had to write a letter home. And I'm, I'm talking about in 2003, uh, we had to write a letter we had to put it in our pocket it was basically, hey, these are our last words. And, uh, you know, you're supposed to write this letter. And I just I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, but a lot of guys did. They wrote their last letter, letter home. And I think I kind of regret that I didn't do it because I would have liked to have read it um, myself. And then, you know, a lot of the times you're maybe wondering, who do I give this to? You know, who's this letter going to go to? Does this letter go to the parents, brother, sister, wife, kids? And so how are you going to write that letter? But when you do make it back, this is a good time to call your parents and maybe talk to them about the letter that you wrote. Uh, or maybe, you know, think about your, your situation in combat and, uh, you know, how it's affected you, how your life um, growing up maybe affected you. And, um, you know, talk to that person. We're asked to write this letter in 2003. And I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't do it. Um, we get back. We're trying to figure it out. It's time to make some calls. It's time to call the brother, sister, friends, our parents. Call your parent. Call that person. It matters. Because not all, not all have good parents. Not all have a parent that was there, like I said. Um, and you try to do that. Um, for that person in your life that kind of helped manage you through your younger years, stood by you side by side, that friend. That family member, that aunt, that uncle, that grandpa, grandma, grandparent, somehow. Somebody helped carry you to the forefront of where you are today. Uh, we may feel that we stand alone in our mind and think that, uh, that that understanding, that little piece or that part of our life at this time or any time can no longer be understood. We, are, we ourselves may not understand it. And in my experience, small elements of, of, of my life will always remain a mystery. But I think it's super important. I found that it is very important for me to have started the talk. And I mean, the talk of the deep minded, rooted, crazy stuff that's on your mind sometimes um, in processing what we've gone through. And whatever, whatever, you know, whatever that life is, whatever that thought is, whatever those things are. Sometimes if you just deal with it on yourself for so long, for so, so many ways that eventually it gets you down a path that is, is, is not healthy and not good. And you create, you know, really a lot of hard times. So whether life or, or at home, you know, however that affected you or life in combat, uh, it's a start to call your parent or that person that's like your parent. You know, I spoke with my mom. I talked with my stepdad. I've talked with my real dad. I haven't talked to my, my, my real dad in 22 years after coming back from combat. And, uh, you know, I finally, I finally ended up talking to him a couple of years back, spent some time trying to talk to him. And, uh, ultimately I found that he was proud of me. He, he kind of had this proud, uh, aura about him. And, uh, although he couldn't fully understand, he just gave me that look, that thought it kind of just said, it's okay not to be okay. 
And that's an important thing that we talk about a lot when we talk. It's okay to be okay. I mean, it's okay to deal with things uh, in, a pro in appropriate manners. Um, even if even if it's not appropriate, you know, it's time to deal with them and uh, it's time to get it back on track. It's time to really work forward to, you know, sharing those things that are dealing with in your mind, whether you're frustrated with your life as a kid or frustrated with your life in combat or whatever that is, is causing these things. It's time to have that conversation. There's a good song that I listen to a lot. It's called, uh, I'm faded. I'm lost. Great lyric by Alan Walker. Um, how do we talk to our parents? I believe for me, it started with my fellow battle buddy and, you know, we always have this trust in the military, you know, the, the, you know, especially if you're in combat, you have this trust to your battle buddy that's in the fighting hole with you. You have this trust to those that you're going into combat with. You have trust in the vehicles that you're driving. Even that, that was limited. You know, my vehicle had 12 teeth missing from the flywheel uh, that sometimes wouldn't catch on the starter. I'd have to run out, open the hood real quick, throw that flywheel, roll it over. And it's not the easiest flywheel to turn. Uh, but, you know, I, I trusted that without those 12 teeth, flywheel was still going to catch and we were going to start that vehicle and move down the road. And just like that, you know, my battle buddy is somebody who I trust. And if you have that parent or somebody that walked by you and really helped you out in life, that's somebody that maybe you can trust and you need to have that trust enough that whatever you say or how you say it may come out all kinds of jacked up and cause all kinds of problems. Um, lost in translation situations. And uh, you never know how that's going to be received by somebody by the way you deliver it or the way that you talk about it. Um, found that it's very important to begin to open up, you know, like the, in that trusted circle. And whether it's one person or many, uh, like like I go to warrior groups through the PTSD Foundation of America. I, 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 I run some of them. And to open up to some of these guys, to open up is, is sometimes difficult um, to fully do it. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, but to open up those lines of communication is super awesome because there are thoughts in my head, thoughts in most people's heads, uh, whether you went to combat or not, that you just don't understand. You can't really articulate how you want to talk about it, and it becomes difficult if you don't. But over time, maybe you talk in your group or your battle buddy and small pieces of the puzzle come together uh, to, get, to, put to, to put to words uh, those complicated thoughts. And again, even the words that don't come out correctly sometimes create problems in the emotion of the loved ones that surround us. And so, you know, what you say and how you say it, you, you need to say it. But sometimes, you know, you need to you need to give that pre-warning too to to maybe your parents say, hey, you know, I, I want to talk to you about some stuff. Uh, you know, as a kid, I was this, this and this. Maybe maybe you felt frustrated about that. And even your parent may feel frustrated about some of the things you did as a kid. Maybe they haven't talked to you about that yet either but they're going to open up maybe that, uh, that line of communication where uh, you're going to be able to reflect on something, process it, and maybe better understand and deal with it. And again, these are all triggers. And we talk about these triggers all the time. A lot of people are always, you know, worried about triggers, but I think we need to hit some of those triggers because maybe you're not going to sleep good tonight, but tomorrow night, and this is something I always say, but tomorrow night, maybe you'll sleep a little bit better because you process those appropriately. Again, Processing these with your family uh, may may uh, may also do it, but be open minded. You know, if you if you're so rigid that you can't accept, you know, a negative comment or a positive comment or these comments that will set you off or something, then you're not ready to do that conversation. It's not something that I'm saying you have to do or, but you should do it because in order to move forward, sometimes you have to go back into your past reach out and pull something out and just really kind of process that. It's important in small doses to share and work on ourselves until the story and ourselves fit back into society with our friends and our families. And this, this is kind of an important, important in, you know, almost ending statement. My ending st statement is important to move forward in a positive direction. And I always say that, and you may measure positive, you know, forward mo momentum, you know, in Vietnam, one village taken was measured in inches, you know, and you need to measure your movement forward sometimes in inches, whether you're dealing with alcoholism, drugs, all these different issues. Um, 
homelessness, all kinds of things that you can be dealing with. But at the end of the day, if you're moving forward and, and you're just one one inch away from from accomplishing a, a goal, that's a pretty pretty awesome thing. And maybe that goal is to get a drink of water. You know, maybe it's to uh, see a friend and say hi, and uh, or get to that battle buddy and have that conversation. Those are important goals and uh, situations. And um, you know, I just, I, I just, I just, as I think about this, you know, it's it's hard to talk to our parents, and it is hard for me to talk to mine. And it was hard for me, and still hard for me to always connect. Sometimes, you know, um, I believe a lot of times I have a hard time uh, connecting with people, um, connecting with different things. But uh, those those that really make a difference in my life. Um, those, those battle buddies that I talk to, the combat vets, seems like I have, I have an ability to talk to them. And I, I sit back and I, and I remember having the conversations out in combat or in, in the field or in the military. And those conversations are really kind of crazy conversations and you just can't have them in public anymore. And it kind of takes away some part of, of each one of us. And maybe we need to have that conversation in the way that we want to have that conversation. Uh, and, um, you know, those that are used to this, those that want to have that camaraderie and that, 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 com that true conversation with you, uh, most likely will not be offended. They won't hold it against you. Um, and they won't, uh, judge you and they'll just, uh, they'll just take it in and be like, all right, man, it's, it's, you know, I understand you've had some thoughts, you've had maybe suicide thoughts, maybe uh, alcohol, drug thoughts that you needed to do or the processes that you needed to do, but you got it out, you talked about it, and you're going to talk about it a little bit more next week and the week after. Um, and now you can have that conversation with your parent and, uh, and really get that, that message across and kind of give them an understanding of where you stand in life and why you're going the directions you're going and, and whatnot. Maybe that'll make it, make it happen. But hey, um, yeah, this is uh, this is Aaron Siebert. Um, you know, like I said, I'm lucky to be alive. I'm on, I'm on uh, life number two after being hit with that mortar round. I come back. I deal with a lot of these things, and you know, I love this country. I love what we do, and um, you know, talk to your parents, talk to your battle buddies, talk to those people that really matter. Till next time, hey, this is Aaron Siebert, retired Navy Chief. I'm signing off. Strength and honor. Out. <laughs>